How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donu here again. This time we're going to take a look at the wave nature of light. So our objectives will be to describe the nature of light and convert between wavelength and frequency. So first off, well, what is light? Light is energy that travels through space, right? It travels like a wave. So there we go, right? What happened? We just saw this wave traveling across the screen, much like light through space. Now the speed of light is kind of fast it's three times ten to the eight meters per second so every second it goes something like 300 million meters so it's really fast it could circle the earth seven and a half times in a single second ready one one thousand seven and a half times went around the whole world but it's also pretty slow when you think about the scale of the universe so it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for light to make it from the earth uh make it to earth from the sun right so the sun is emitting this light it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for that light to even reach us and it takes 43 minutes for that light to make it to jupiter and it takes more than four hours for light from the sun to make it to neptune and under the right conditions when in the night sky you can see the andromeda galaxy with the naked eye and that light has been traveling for over two and a half million years the light you're seeing is two and a half million years old it's been traveling through space unobstructed until it entered your eye and you absorbed it so you know you're kind of special, I guess. If not for any other reason, then you were the final destination for those photons that you looked at. So wavelength, frequency, and speed of light. So the wonderful people at FET, uh, FET.colorado.edu, have put together a simulator we're going to take a look at. We're going to examine uh, the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So here on the FET simulation, we can play around with things. We can play with waves and pulses and stuff but right now I want to take a look at the scenario that most l appropriately resembles uh, wave and light behavior so I got the damping down to nothing I got a frequency it's oscillating so you can watch this wave on the string travel to infinity now I want you to track the peaks and see how long it takes a peak to go from the start all the way to out the door. So right now we have a, a particular wavelength that's traveling out the door. And if I increase the frequency, I'm going to shorten the wavelength. But I want you to pay attention to what happens to how long it takes each peak to make it to the door. You'll see that the peaks are traveling at the same speed because the speed of light is constant. In a vacuum, it's 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And it doesn't matter to the frequency of the light or the wavelength of the light, the speed at which it travels is still the same. All right, so let's let's take some freeze-framed stuff and see uh, the relationship between that. So here are some snapshots from that simulation. And now the wavelength, you can tell, is the distance between two uh, peaks. So this is my wavelength, usually given by that symbol. Uh, and you can see in the picture below, there is a shorter wavelength. Now the speed of light is constant, but the frequency, right? So if I was an observer hanging out at the door and I was counting how many peaks went by me in a certain amount of time, that would be my frequency. And those two things are not going to be the same. So as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. If all of those peaks are traveling at the same speed. The only way you can have more peaks passing a sa the same point at a, during a given second is if the distance between those peaks is smaller. The speed that they travel is still the same, so the speed of light is always constant. So what is this going to look like mathematically? How are we going to re relate speed of light, wavelength, and frequency? With this equation, where c is the speed of light, the lambda is the wavelength, and you might have to convert it to meters depending on what units they give you. Sometimes they give you nanometers, so you need to convert. And then nu, this kind of weird looking V, is the frequency in per second, or one over second, or second to the minus one, or hertz, or hz. Those are all the same thing. So as the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency gets bigger. So let's take a look at an example. It says green light has a wavelength of roughly 540 nanometers. What is the frequency for this wavelength of light? So in order to figure that out, we go, all right, well, I have this equation and they're asking me to solve for frequency. So let me get it by itself. I got to divide each side by lambda and I end up with the 
frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So the speed of light is this 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then the 540 nanometers, nano means 10 to the minus nine. So I have 540 times 10 to the minus nine meters. And when I plug and chug that math, I end up with 5.56 times 10 to the negative 14. And then what happens to my units? I could put per second, I could do second to the minus one, or I could put Hertz, HZ, all the same thing. So the electromagnetic spectrum, light is a whole spectrum. So electromagnetic radiation, light, it comes in all sorts of wavelengths and the visible spectrum is just a really narrow band of the whole spectrum. So we only see a, a tiny portion of all the light that's out there. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Summarize, can you explain the nature of light? And can you convert between wavelength and frequency? Okay, bye.